now that it is seven o'clock, I am going to call to order the Monday, September 25th, 2023 meeting of the Norton Finance Committee. I will take our roll call attendance. Kevin. Here. All right. Paul. Here. Steve. Here. Sandy. Here. Joe. Here. I know Bill is absent tonight. Bonnie. Here. Cody will be late. Zach. Here. Trace. Here. Okay. Um, all right, Mike. What do you have for us tonight? Budget update. You sent a new um revenues and expenditure sheet with okay. some new growth. Yes. All right, let me share my screen. open that first I was all set for water and so let me go over the oh I see Cody has joined us hi Cody and he got a haircut well, she clean. I used to have hair <laughs> All right, so as the chairwoman said, um, new growth um, came in at $748,786 uh, versus our estimate of $700,000. So the bottom line is we're to the good $75,006. Okay. Anyone have any questions on this new updated sheet? Okay. Hearing none, we can move on to the next agenda item. All right. The next item, agenda item would be um, Article 5, which is water operating uh, budget. And let me... I know we have uh, representatives from the Water and Sewer Department on to uh, speak on this. Yeah, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, um, so uh, we're doing water first, right, Mike? Yes. Okay. Um, so the, the additional requested mainly could thing um one is when um spring meeting uh, you're breaking uh, up a little bit there every okay. other word's coming in how about how about now how's this good good so far any better yep you um, want to just start over sorry I, uh, yeah i think i had my hand over the mic sorry um so uh at springtown meeting uh when that was voted on on not all the collective bargaining agreements were um, finalized. So we had put in some preliminary estimated numbers. Um, and when we got the additional numbers, it was a pretty, rel I mean, relatively small uh, thing for, I had it right here, for salary and uh, incentives the difference was uh just just under eighty six hundred dollars um and then uh the past i want to say mike i don't know if you remember about the past month we had heard this isn't really something i get into as much from the uh when it comes to our short short-term principal mike for borrowing uh we were right. told that there was a payment due on that for just under twenty three thousand um so that's where the the difference is on the water side of things 
Uh, it was mostly just because of the collective bargaining agreement differences. Um, some licensing stipends were increased and hourly rates had gone up a little bit. Does anyone have any questions for John? Yeah, um, could you just could you just rehash some of the I know it's a small sale, but I'm curious, what what are the incentives? Uh, so incentives are for um, job related licenses. So, uh, you know, if someone has a CPL or a hoisting license, get a stipend for that. And uh, when the new collective bargaining agreements were um, negotiated, you know, some of the licenses went up like $150 per license per year. I think the clothing allowance went up, but I think the clothing allowance actually we had uh, accounted for it before the Springtown meeting. But there was a couple of uh, couple that went up slightly more than we had anticipated, and um, they were still hashing it out at the time. Thank you, Madam well, Chair. Uh, who is that? Sorry, Paul. Paul. Paul, go ahead, Paul. Uh, Mike. Yeah. The uh, budget sheet you're showing in front of us right now, does that include the new additional requests? And it would be easier if that was broken out separately for us to see. Um, it does include the new requests. And um, so if you look at um, personnel services, that was uh, in May, 1,242,231. And so now it's 1,261,605, a difference of 19,374. And the other difference is the debt, which um, in May uh, was 1,620,991. And it now is 1,643,964. Everything else um, in the budget stays the same. One of there's a way that you could show those increases separate, Mike, so you actually see them, because otherwise we'd have to have two spreadsheets side by side and go back and forth between them. And I don't know if that's just me that realizes it's confusing or not, but I'd love to see exactly what we're giving each department as we go. No, I agree, Paul. Uh, uh, in, in go ahead, Joe. Um, Mike, uh, can you repeat what the difference in the debt is? Um, the difference in the debt? It was 1,620,991, and now it's uh, 1,643,964, or a difference of 22,973. Thank you. And Mike, what's that attributed to that we didn't know during the budget session that we find out now? Um, I, I think it's attributed to um, not the treasurer uh, collector re realized after town meeting that uh, water and sewer needed to borrow uh, more money in the current fiscal year. And, and so again, what was it? What was it for? I know we're borrowing additional, but what was it for, and that we didn't know about during the budget season that we're just finding out about now? Um, I what project would this have been for john is it the sewer i, I mean, believe the, um, i believe it was for wells seven six um right we were doing some short-term borrowing we're still waiting on congressionally approved money by congressman jake ochenclaus we've been waiting over two years now for it um so i again it's, i'm not I'm not entirely sure how those numbers work it's more of that's yeah, like you said, uh, Mike, the treasurer and the accountant know more than I do about that. But um, I think it, it stems from having to wait on that money, but we had to pay uh, the contractor to do the job. Okay, just a little concern about the, just a little concern about the control around that reconciliation, I'll call it, about what we had to pay and We'll find out shortly thereafter the year end. So a little concerned. Madam Chair. Yeah, Joe. Go ahead. That was Cody. Oh, sorry, um, Cody. Um I thought when we went through the, the budget um before spring annual town meeting that 
we had already accounted for the extra spending that was that, like we were going to have to spend in the difference 80,000 or 90,000 more um still waiting on that that uh the national funding to come through like we had to pay more i thought we had already approved that are you saying this is an addition to what we had already approved well the other thing is when um you know i don't know whether the treasurer figured a uh, lower interest rate um, i'll have to check with her on that am i am i incorrect there wasn't there built into the budget that we approved in the spring there was already the additional cost that was uh requested within that budget so it sounds like there's an additional on top of the additional that was already approved and which which item are you talking about cody for for the water it was either water or sewer i can't remember which one but there was something about i thought it had to do with the new well so i thought it was water yeah. there was like the amount that was supposed to be funded um wasn't coming through there were additional engineering costs that we were going to have to spend to be able to recoup them in the long run for federal funds and in my in my memory and i was trying to go back through the notes that i have on it but i i want to say it was like 80 or 90 thousand that we had approved in the budget at at annual town meeting and now it sounds like it's double what was originally in the budget Well, they were. Oh, go ahead. Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I think what you're referring to, Cody, is we had talked about uh, having to fund our third well, which is well four. Um, we did have to get town meeting approval uh, for the 900000 to cover the cost of that well. And at the time, it was determined that we would continue to track the same way as we did for wells five and six, where we would pay the engineering services ourselves. Uh, because the way that uh, we somehow found out in a roundabout way after five and six were already competitively bid and the process had already started, uh, we were led to believe in the beginning that uh, everything was going to be covered and be reimbursable. Once we found out all the, the loopholes that we had to go through for the auction cost money, um, anything that wasn't competitively bid, uh, even though Massachusetts doesn't require engineering to be competitively bid, the federal government does. So well four was going to have uh, a hit of about 85 to 90,000 uh, for engineering services design and some of the field work that needs to be done there. And that would be the hit that we would have to take on our own and everything allegedly after that will be reimbursable from auction costs. Uh, unfortunately, we still haven't seen any of that money from Congress uh, for wells five and six and the way that the any of the grant systems work is you have to be able to 100% fund the project just in case for some reason the uh, eligibility falls through or the grant funding just doesn't work out. Um, so I think those are the numbers that you're remembering. This bond uh, payment that's going back, which is uh, short term principal, Wells 5 and 6, um, because we had to borrow those up front with town meeting approval, we um, were talking with the town accountant and um, the treasurer. And it was in our best interest, hoping that the funding was coming from auction costs to re-up the short-term borrowing and have no penalties for up to two years. Um, now that it's gone through that, and I believe the end of October um, will be the fruition point where it goes from short-term to long-term, the bonding company expects to see some type of payment made. And that's where the uh, the twenty-two or $23,000 is coming from just to satisfy that, that amount. Uh, did did we know um, at the time when we were going through the budget process? Did we know that that was that you were re-upping the the short-term borrowing? I mean, should that have been included in the request in spring, and it was just missed? No, um, it was all intentions was to go through and extend that for another year. Um, it is not recommended, but it can be done for a third year. The borrowing company, the town um, accountant, uh, believes that we should just get out of that. It seems, unfortunately, that the congressman's money is not going to be in by the time this goes to full. So they expect us to make that one payment now and continue making payments uh, on the on the debt. 
So if you make the payment and then the funding comes in, what comes, what happens to the, is this like this payment would be gone or is it recouped through the federal money? No, it is gone. Basically right now we're looking at it as if that congressional funding isn't ever been in place and it was just a, a dream that we all had and we're going to go go forward with funding it and paying it down as, as if we would have originally. Uh, it doesn't change the numbers on the project. All it did was actually buy us uh, just about two years of, of deferred payment. Madam Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin. Mike, can we yeah. talk with the treasurer? Is there any other situations where we're deferring, doing this short-term borrowing rollover with the potential federal money that may be a pipe dream that's not plugged in the budget that we should have budgeted? Is this a one-off? Yes, we don't have any others that we're uh, planning on federal funding for. So when it said the federal government recommends you to, the town to budget it locally? It's required to be funded fully by the town, anticipating uh, that it would be uh, paid back by federal funding. I was trying to see if I could share the uh, May warrant at the same time. But these are the numbers that I was referring to. This was voted in May. And the only two that are changing are the debt service going to 1643964 and personnel services going to 1261605. So Mike, just to clarify, would the total request be um, 42,347 for this supplement? The total request would be the 19,374 plus the 22,973. Right, so should that be 42,347? That's my yeah. math, right? <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Um, just remind me, Mike, which which article is this? Article five. All right. Madam Chair. Yes, Kevin. Mike Frank, has the water department looked at any type of clawback? I feel like sometimes we have these discussions and, and we go to where we need to supplement, but as the discussion in terms of, could you claw back somewhere else to hold it net zero? I don't understand the, uh, the terminology. Can you dumb it down can, a little bit for me. Can you give up money somewhere else to cover this oops on the short-term debt issue? Oh, it's, it's definitely not an oops. Uh, we actually cut back this budget uh, pretty significantly. If you looked at the, uh, the original drafts that we had in the spring, I think the debt issue is an oops. Uh, it's not, not the total budget. I'm not saying no, the budget's I mean, an oops. Yeah, the contractual agreements and stuff are something that's out of our control, unfortunately. Um, everybody negotiates and gets what they can. And uh, as far as the uh, the debt services, that's something that John and I technically uh, you know don't actually work on down here. Um, I don't think there's enough fluff in this budget to actually take away from anything else without. Uh, you know, pulling from retained. Mike, do you agree with that? I do. 
Okay. Um, Joe. Go ahead, Joe, or Cody, sorry. So, um, Frank, it sounds like the the bond payment is not in your purview. It sits outside of whatever the, your scope for budgeting purposes. That is correct. We get the information from town hall while we, when we're doing our budgets. So Mike, who, like, who should have caught that? Like where, where did we miss that in the budgeting process that this should have been included in there? Um, I'll get an explanation from the treasurer collector on, uh, why the extra money was needed. Uh, Frank, so the collective bargaining for contractual increases for next year, could you anticipate that that maybe could happen when you're figuring the budget for next fiscal year to maybe prevent this from happening again next fall? No, th these are you have only, no control over that either. These only happen uh, when the contract is up, which is every three years. And okay. uh, the uh, water, sewer, and highway are the last three to actually settle their budgets. Historically, it's always been that way. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes it does roll after town meeting. So we use theoretical data. Um, we have pretty good conversations with uh, some of the other union members uh, to know what they're asking for. But until that uh, final contract is signed and approved, we really don't know for sure um, exactly who's getting what if something changed at the last minute. <clears throat> so you'll see this probably on a every, every three year basis. You're going to see that there's going to be one um, that uh, you know, if we're conservative with the numbers like we were here based on the information that we were provided with, we might come up short. And then there's also a possibility that we may have other numbers in there um, that could entirely cover it. But we could cut the uh, overtime budget pretty significantly here based on changes that we had with operations of the water treatment facility. Um, so that was a heavy number that we carried uh, two to three previous uh, budgets. And uh, that's been cut down in this one here. So like I said, there's, there's very little fluff in this budget. Right. Um, Chair? Go ahead, Jeff. Um, Mike, just so I'm clear, where are we proposing that these additional funds come from? Retained earnings. Madam Chair? Yes, John. Uh, Mike, I have a quick question. Um, the number you had said the difference was, I believe it was. 19,000 and change, is that correct? For personnel services? Yes. Yep, but you can double check my math. Oh, I, uh, in my first draft of putting together I, these numbers, I, I had that as well. Can, can you hear me okay? I, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I had had that number as well. Um, but then I had found uh looking at numbers i got from james that it looked like there was a article at town meeting that had already kind of given a sort of supplement anticipating increases in um collective bargaining agreements yeah so like i have a per so i have actual personal services numbers of uh nine nine five eight four one approved at town meeting and i have what we were uh, proposing here as one million four thousand six hundred and five. Um, so that's where I got the uh, eight thousand five hundred and sixty four dollar number from instead of the nineteen thousand dollar number from. Well, we'll uh, I'll check on that and uh, yeah. Do you want to go on to Article 6, Paula, and SOAR? Yes. So we'll be tabling Article 5 to get those exact yep. personnel numbers? Okay. Yep. Can I ask one question on that before we move forward? Go ahead, Zach. So I'm just looking at scrolling through the page of uh, estimated revenues. And am I understanding it right that you're going to have <laughs> A shortfall in covering this, and you're pulling. How is that written? Retained. Uh, you're pulling money from retained earnings to come up with this number. Scroll up to the package, Mike, that uh, says uh, anticipated water revenues. 
Yeah, just scroll down. <laughs> Oh, you had it there the first time. Yep. So can can we get a clarification on this on this page? The retained earn yeah, so the difference was being covered by retained earnings. Um I was pretty sure that um uh, trying to zoom in here. Give me one second. Um so the retained earnings number that we have is based on uh more receipts. Uh, so so I'm understanding here correctly. You have basically you have a five hundred and thirty nine thousand dollar five hundred and fifty one shortfall in your budget this year is what you what you're saying and you're pulling that from previous funds from previous years. Is that the way I understand that? Correct. And how long before this becomes, before the snowball comes down the hill and becomes a disaster? Uh, I was pretty, uh, go ahead, Frank. Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead, Frank. Thank you. Yeah, Zach, this is something that's reoccurring uh, every year. So. If you look at the uh, the interfund transfer numbers, that's the monies that we pay back to the town for all of our services. Um, as you know, we're self sufficient down here, so we pay for our own insurances. Uh, you know everything that goes along with it. You know uh, part of that is for salaries that we pay pay a portion for up at town hall, and anything additional where this would be uh, a budgetary change, those monies would be added to the retained earnings. But and Mike can correct me if I'm wrong with this. Uh, I believe it's halfway through the year that any of our receipts that are cleared then go back into our retained earnings coffer. Um, and that's where we start to balance things out part way through. Uh, there has always been a deficit that runs along. It is you know, larger in some years, uh, not so much in others. And uh, this is where, um, you know, I've been concerned in the past with these numbers getting uh, lower and lower. And uh, I know everybody's biggest uh, thing is, you know, when can we lower the rates? What can we adjust? Uh, unfortunately, the, the numbers don't lie here. We're, uh, we're speaking with our rate specialist, uh, same person that's done the rate studies here for years and years. And uh, they will be coming in to make sure that uh, the numbers that we're at now, uh, fees, rates, any type of, of connections, um, that it is gonna be a sustainable number uh, the last rate study that we did was pre-COVID, and as everybody knows by looking at their own utility bills, everything has doubled, some things have tripled. Um, we use a lot more things than the average person as far as chemicals and uh, and other types of needs for water and sewer. Uh, you know, so our expenses are, are pretty high, and this is something that, that uh, we are looking at, we are concerned about, but not overly concerned. Not right now, anyway. So what is the balance in the coffers at the moment for the water department, Mike? Do you have that? Three million one hundred three million one hundred and thirty thousand forty seven dollars is their retained earnings. Okay. And if, if we looked at a five year, that's trending down year after year after year. Is that what you indicated, Frank? The interfund transfers are trending up. Um, our cost expenses are trending up. So that is definitely what we're going to look at. So every time we take anything from retained earnings, um, it's very slow to, to, to build back up. You know, it's recommended by, uh, by DOR and by the, uh, the rate study professionals that we use that you're supposed to have a certain percentage of your most valuable asset in retained earnings or one whole year's worth of coverage. Um, if for something, you know, if the market was a dropout something like that, that you'd still be able to be able to maintain and sustain everything you currently do now. Um, so we are trending low on that number because we have the new water treatment facility in place. Um, in the past, we were actually much higher than we needed to be because our most valuable asset would have been one of our elevated storage tanks. So every time you add or take away from the system or do improvements on the system, that percentage that you're supposed to hold in retained earnings uh, as an emergency fund, you know, it really it can take a hit. Madam Chair, 
Yes, John. Um, just uh, I had um, remember it acts right now to my email. Oh, so, you're breaking uh, up again. Uh, how about now? Okay. Yeah, I keep putting my finger over the microphone. That's my <laughs> fault. Um, I was looking back at our uh, FY23 budget. And our retained earning number is lower in that budget than it is in this budget. I believe it was two million one seven nine six zero one. In this, it says oh, uh, two four three zero five one. And then Mike, I believe you just said it was a little over three million. Correct. So um, I think, like Frank had said, it takes a for um, what we took in. To become certified in our retained earnings is that right mike um yeah retained earnings is certified every year um when we have our free cash certification so august or september thank you okay any other questions before we move on to sewer article six Okay. All right, go ahead, John. The difference in sewer um, is uh, it's mostly all um, salaries, wages, and term positions, um, and it's basically the same issue of the collective bargaining agreements and we had one employee who um, was anticipating retiring at the beginning of July and now is not retiring to the fall so uh, at the time of town we weren't expecting him his rate to be on our books um, so basically we had to fund him longer than it because his retirement date changed and uh, get that finger away from your microphone <laughs> that that time actually it wasn't the case <laughs> um so uh sorry i don't know what you heard but the uh basically we had to fund him for long anticipated because his retirement date changed and he's at a um one of the higher rates on the pay scale so you beer we were funding him for basically five months. We are expecting to have him off our book the mid to end of July. Okay. So the difference um, in this budget versus what was approved or originally requested under personnel services is seventeen thousand three three four and under debt service, $1,001. And once again, uh, as um, Paul Schlaker had said, we'll get you a comparison um, before you vote. That'll show what was requested at the town meeting. Um, we'll show what was added as part of that article that John referred to for the contracts and then what they're asking, what they're asking for now. Anyone have any questions or comments on the sewer budget? Frank, did you want to speak on the email that Mike just referred to um, about the Cobb Street project? Yeah, if everybody's all set with the uh, with the sewer budget, we can move over to that if it's okay. All right. So we have a request. We went before uh, capital. Originally, the uh, estimate for what is known as phase two at our Cobb Street sewage pumping station um, was before town meeting. I believe it was back May of 21, if I remember correctly. Um, and we were approved for 300,000. That was for phase two. What had happened is we had approved, been approved for phase one. And unfortunately, that's right when COVID hit. The uh, phase one was all the electrical upgrades, the fans, the generator, uh, transfer switch, and everything with that, unfortunately, because of microchips and because of supply and demand was put on hold. 
So we went uh, before you guys before for the town meeting and asked for phase two to be appropriated. We were going to take them out of order. So we did do that. Uh, phase one finally jumped back, um, and actually, it's John could remember what the what the uh, time frame was, but uh, believe it or not, we actually just got our generator in at that location last month, and this started back in 2020 or early 2021. Yeah, well, uh, well over 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, it, it's no joke when you go with the bigger machines like that, that they're just not there, or if they are, they can't be completed because of these tiny little microchips. Um, so because of multiple happenings here, the delay in the time frame between the uh, engineer's estimate, the supply chain issues, and just the market being very volatile uh, for competitive bids, the project went out to bid for phase two and actually came in uh, about 50,000 over the engineer's estimate, which at that time was, was two years old. Uh, so we were actually asking for an additional 100,000 to cover any unforeseens, and that would be on top of the 300,000 that was already approved. So we'll have about a $50,000 swing on top of that to hopefully cover any unknowns. So for those of you not familiar with the Cobb Street uh, sewage pumping station, it's the largest pumping station that Norton has. It's the heart of the system. Everything goes channeled through there. And that station, unfortunately, sat, uh, I'm not afraid to say neglected, for 20 years. Um, the system that's in there that handles the air quality failed shortly after that station was online, within, I believe, five to seven years. And nothing was done about it. So anything that was in there that was corrosive basically deteriorated rapidly. And there's been multiple band-aids put on that station over the years. Now we're to a point where we want to do major upgrades, being that it's 30, 31 years old, and nobody's seen the bottom of the actual wet well in 25, 27 years. So knowing the corrosive nature of it and just the friction alone from pumping that much wastewater um, through a concrete vault, there, there could be significant deficiencies in the base of that wet well. So we're putting different contingencies in for different grades of deterioration and each of those has a different rate because there's different requirements for repair. Um, so unfortunately, this isn't a station that we can, you know, sit by and aimlessly just not do anything about. So there's going to be some big money thrown at this station because we can't live without it. So that's why we asked for the 100000 instead of 50000 to come right in where the budget numbers say we should be, um, anticipating that we will see change orders here because of the unknown. Anyone have questions or comments? Madam Chair. Sandy. Um, Frank, just a quick question. So we already approved at um, timing phase three as well, correct money for that? And so yes, do you anticipate that's gonna go up as well since the because of the delays? Phase three is really the final aspect of it. And hopefully that time will be in our, our favor this taking so long, because now we have seen that some of the VFDs and stuff are coming in um, they're not as expensive as they were during COVID. They're not as hard to get. Um, some of the specialty parts are still difficult. Um, you know, the generator was definitely one of them. The transfer switch was another, but we covered that on the phase one. You know, phase three, um, we're probably, honestly, probably two years out before we actually do phase three. Uh, but we can't go out to bid until we have monies appropriated. And oddly enough, that the way that the bid system works is we have to take a, an estimate and run with that and then hope that the numbers come in where they are. You know, you'd think there'd be a, a better streamlined way of doing things, you know, getting some type of signed contract with, you know, three bidders so you can actually see what the lowest number is and then project that number to town meeting. It would make everybody look that much better and your numbers would be so much tighter. But unfortunately it just doesn't work that way. Madam Chair. Yeah, Joe. Um, is this 100000 also coming from retained earnings? Yes, it is, Joe. Thank you. Um, sure. Yes, Cody. So just so we're clear, if, if we're recommending the, it's it's used up to 100000 from retained earnings, so if you don't need it, it stays within retained earnings, or is it pulled out and put in account? No, it, it's uh, it's going to lock that number in as as an approved total number for that project. If it does not get used and that project ends, 
it would be uh, certified and go back to retained earnings. And if if the this is for the study and and looking into the well and if if it's if it needs repairs, that's going to be a, a separate discussion. Is that going to be like a capital um, capital project, or how's how is that handled if they they do the inspections and and you find out that you know the bottom is completely corroded and you've got to rebuild it? No, well, this is part of the uh, the total cost. We uh, we had the engineer's estimate. We had people come out and inspect what they could while it's still actively pumping. Um, we've given them the worst case scenario of what we anticipate down there. Uh, you can gain access and actually go down uh, two levels before you're actually into the wastewater. So you can get a pretty good idea of what's going on down there. Um, anybody in the business kind of can understand what the deterioration is for what you can see and, and theorizes on what it would look underneath uh, based on what we've told them, the, the maintenance logs that we have on the facility. And that's how they come up with their estimate which we believe is why they came in a little bit higher because of there is the unknown there. Um, that money that's the 300,000 that's already approved and hopefully the 100,000 additional that will be approved uh, is supposed to cover the work there at, at phase two, um, unless there's something catastrophic that nobody can could have anticipated. So part of this work, what we're doing is, um, I'm sure many of you have heard of like a, a three-part epoxy. There's some, some heavy duty chemicals out there that bond to concrete. So we've, picked a couple of those chemicals that will work in this situation. And the scope of work that has to happen here is, is pretty massive. So basically they're gonna redirect all of Norton's wastewater flow from the sewer manhole that's located outside of our facility there, right in uh, Reservoir Street. They're gonna temporarily pump the wastewater up, redirect it down and inside the building and basically bypass the wet well system itself. So that will allow them basically to plug off the, the wet well, completely suck it dry, see everything exactly what's going on, and then make final determination uh, if there needs to be a leveling course put in there, and then they seal it with the uh, three-part epoxy, or if it's actually in really good shape and they can get away with just doing uh, minor repairs, maybe some sloping of some valleys and stuff that might be in there. Uh, so that's all part of phase two. Adam Chair. Yes, sir. Before we let uh, Frank go uh, on uh, on this, can we get a brief uh, update on where we are on the water department with the wells, all the projects you've been working on over the summer since we've last spoke? So the uh, wells, four, five, and six are fully operational. Uh, five and six uh, went online and it was a night and day difference seeing the the water quality and volume that we've gotten um, into the water treatment facility. Uh, four uh, subsequently failed during that time frame. We actually coordinated the cleaning event with a motor and pump replacement and actually also found that the line that leaves the pitless adapter, which is where the well sits and connects to the building actually was partially clogged. Um, that's, you know, historically always been the highest producer of iron and manganese. And by changing from the high velocity pumps that we had when we didn't have a treatment facility to a low head pump, it actually allowed the manganese to settle out even quicker, which was causing a partial clog. Um, can't really say that that led to, you know, an increased uh, failure rate of the pump and motor that was in there. They, they all had some age and some wear on them, uh, but it definitely wasn't helping anything. So now we can say that we have a significant volume of water coming from those three locations, which are filtered at the treatment facility. Uh, well one has been knocked down uh, basically to an emergency need only. Uh, we have used it for some of the flushing sequences when we're working through that area. And uh, if anybody's been out in town, you, you know that uh, you've seen quite a few people out doing some flushing um, during the summer. You know, this uh, the temperature is very difficult to control and maintain any type of disinfection residuals in the system. So the only way that you can combat that is to keep flushing the water and keep what we call new water in the distribution system. Um, so unfortunately we waste a lot of water to do that, but as you have seen, we haven't been out doing our fall flushing program. So we're kind of balancing out, you know, instead of uh, hitting it hard for eight to 10 weeks, you know, we're spreading it out over the course of the summer, a um, little less impactful on the wells overall, and obviously less impactful for the residents, um, not having to deal with any disruptions. 
Uh, we've been using a lot of the fire pumps testing in town to our advantage. Um, I know most people unfortunately don't look at the, the website and see every one that we've lined up, but we do still have the postings there and on the Norton Media page. Um, if it's a large test, we do require that it gets posted in the Sun Chronicle newspaper. Um, there's still quite a few people that uh, subscribe to that, I hear. Um, so fire pump tests, fire hydrant tests, and things like that would be posted in the paper. And, uh, you know, knock on wood, we actually uh, just last week had two of the largest tests done that were back to back. Uh, Bernie and Phil's down at, uh, you know, the end of East Main Street. They had two fire pumps and they do them at the same time. So everything went off without a hitch down there. We did some light flushing afterwards, uh, anticipating the area was going to have some debris because of, unfortunately, we had a pipe failure just a few weeks prior to that down at Kings Lane off of uh, Newland Street. And uh, it really wasn't that bad. So it, everything is, is definitely turned uh, 100% from where it used to be. Uh, well, three is the well that we do trend high on the PFAS numbers. That's the well off of uh, Newland Street over near the uh, the tower that's known as the big pine tree that's over there, the cell tower. Uh, that well, more than likely, unfortunately, uh, will exceed at some point. Uh, thankfully, no one's been very lucky. It hasn't exceeded the, the 20 parts per trillion threshold that's set in place for PFAS. But uh, with the heavy rains that we've been having, um, you know, it doesn't leave much time for water filtration before it gets into the aquifers and the heavy flow actually stirs the aquifers up. So uh, mm -hmm. fingers crossed that we don't have any issues with that well. Um, if we do, we would have to follow mass DEP protocol uh, for uh, basically coming up with a, a solution to that, that problem that no one hasn't found yet. Whatever happened to, uh, to the uh, federal uh, pushback on PFOS that they were going to bring it down to zero. I think it brought that up last year. Yep, um, a bunch of uh, the larger corporations um, and many, many of the water uh, industry professionals got together and actually submitted all sorts of letters um, to all of our congressional delegates. Um, and it's actually caused them to open their eyes a little bit. So we were supposed to have information by November of this year if they were going to set that number down to four parts per trillion, which is what, uh, if you do a research right now on the website, it says that's what the threshold is. And now it has a stay out till February 2024. It'll give them a little bit more time to make their decision. Um, we're not saying that we don't want to comply. We're just saying we'd like to have a little bit more time uh, for everybody to be able to react. You know, it's uh, you know the flip of a switch. You're going to go from the 20 parts per trillion threshold down to four. You know, other communities like Norton is very lucky. We haven't exceeded yet, but other communities have already spent millions and millions of dollars uh, putting in removal systems to handle this stuff. And we know it's not going away. We know it's bad, but you know, it really should have been thought of differently before, you know, making such a major impact. Um, and obviously we'd love to have federal funding, but unfortunately we know how that works. So all three wells now, I uh, know the three main wells have all been replaced. Wells five and six are brand new and have been relocated. Well, four, we haven't started that process yet. We did have to clean it and rebuild it in, in its exact location where it is now. Um, again, hoping to not bite into that 900,000 that was approved at town meeting because it will cut back on the amounts that we get reimbursed from the congressman if that ever happens. Because that well has been cleaned, we put a small delay on actually moving forward with that. But, uh, you know, if we don't hear back from the EPA or from the, the congressman's office, you know, by the spring, we're going to push forward with that as if that money was never there. And the aeration system for the tanks that was approved the town meeting, is that done? That is not done. Uh, I was speaking with the company today, um, trying to get some other ideas. Um, there's two different systems. The aeration system is just one. Um, there's also an aeration and a mixer system. The system that we're looking for was recommended by Mass DEP. Uh, one of our representatives knows that it works well in another community who had THM issues. And we just want to make sure that we're getting the best for our dollar. If we're going to go in the tank, we're going to do everything. If somebody can sell me on the fact that an aeration system with a mixer is a far better product, I would gladly go back and ask for more money at town meeting. If the aerator is all we need, and it's definitely going to lower our THM by 80%, which is the number that was thrown out there, then we'll, we'll take that and we'll, we'll run with it. Thank you, Frank. You're very welcome.
Thank you for that update, Frank. Anyone else have any questions, comments? Okay. All right, I think you gentlemen are off the hot seat for now and <laughs> bring back Article yeah. 7 and 6 at a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. You have a great night. You too. Thank you. You're on mute, Mike. Hello, Mike. Sorry about that. There you go. All right, Article 15 and 16 are put forward by the Select Board. Um, and the first one, Article 15, is to replace the rear parking lot at uh, Norton Historical Society at 18 West Main. And Article 16 is to connect the building to SOAR. And uh, Bob Kimball, who uh, is on the board, I believe, Bob of the Historical Society, um, has been has been working on this and would like to speak. Can I ask one question, Madam Chair, before Bob steps Go ahead, in? Sir. Yep. Go ahead. Why wouldn't this be presented at the Capitol meeting, Mike, and not here? Um, the I I we didn't have the numbers um, when we were at the last Capitol meeting. Well, is this going to go through capital or just going to go through the finance committee? I'm just sure. Um, we'll, um, we'll, we'll bring it to capital to get their approval to, um, is it, there's no, no borrowing involved, but we'll bring it to them. Hey, Zach. Yes, sir. Um, wouldn't capital be for actual equipment and stuff? This is to do a parking lot. It's to do the sewer system. It's not really to buy any, um, equipment. Anytime anybody wants, uh, you know, we, we've approved parking lots of capital and, and things like that, and it's a capital expenditure. Uh, this is not a uh, an operating budget. It's a it's a capital expenditure. So I, it, it, yeah, okay, you can do building improvements and capitalize those. Okay, and my my question, Zach, I thought you were going to grab it was um, especially on the parking lot. Why would the uh, highway just handle that, Mike? Like they've done so many other lots in town. Um, we'll let Bob speak on it. Right. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me, I hope? Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, we, we spoke to the highway department regarding um, the parking lot. Usually when they get to this size, this size and magnitude, uh, they usually farm it out to someone else. Because it does take quite a bit of uh, equipment and, and work to do it. In this particular case, we now have a concrete uh, parking lot area, I believe you guys have a picture of it, um, that will require not only removing the concrete, but also the rebar underneath it. It's quite a, quite a challenge to get that done. Uh, the highway department normally does farm them out. And in fact, they gave me a couple of companies that I could contact to find out uh, if they were if they were interested. So uh, to answer your question, I believe the job is a bit too wide for something that they want to try to attempt to, uh, to get done. Thank you, Bob. Bob, did you get estimates? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I received uh, three estimates on on, on both projects, um, ranging from twenty one thousand nine hundred dollars up to somewhere around thirty six thousand. So they were all over the board. Um, we did get a company, Ryan is a company that the town has used a number of times in our municipal parking lot areas. And they actually came in on the low side and would be someone I would recommend uh, the price to uh, to do the job would be $16,720. That's just the parking lot area that does not include the driveway going in or the U driveway in front. Those are in pretty good shape. When they're trying to repair the one in the back expanded by 20 feet, allowing us to have parking on both sides instead of just one side.
Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Kimball? Uh, Madam Chair? Yes, Joe. Um, this really isn't about the, the budget. I'm looking at the, the map now. Um, if you're gonna widen it, which direction would it go? Towards the towards the edge of the property or towards the building? Toward the edge, it would go east to west. It would go toward uh, toward the center of town. Got it. Okay. And it's gonna be a combination of both because we have to kind of be very much aware of the property line there. So we're gonna keep right. it away from the property line. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. There is ledge there also that we have to deal with. Madam Chair? Yes, Zach. Bob, you want to talk about the sewer part of this? Just explain that a little bit. Sure. Sure. So we're um, obviously we all know that municipal uh, sewerage was installed on, on West Main. And the prices we received on the sewer lines were all over the board. Um, just to give you a, a brief history, what we're, we're going to be dealing with. When they, I think most of us who live in the area know that when the sewer line was installed in West Main, uh, ledge was very prominent in the uh, in the area and required a lot of drilling. So as I went out to these nine various um, companies to see if they would be interested in uh, connecting, I got a couple back that said immediately was said hell no, and others kind of went along and uh, and, and gave me a, a proposal on, on on doing the project. So what we're dealing with here is a, a section of, uh, of West Main, we're down seven feet, six inches below grade. Uh, the stub is connected to just up underneath the sidewalk. We have to connect from the sidewalk to the rear of the building. Looking at the building will be on the left-hand side of the building. And the grade goes down, not, it's not flush, it's not, it's not uh, going up, it's going down. So we're, we are kind of concerned about whether or not the gravity feed is going to work. And there's two reasons why we're probably not going to suggest a gravity feed. Uh, one is the fact that we think the lower grade of the building where in the back is where all of our water is and our storage is in the bottom floor. We, we've been told we have to go down 18 to 24 inches below grade, below the foundation in order to uh, to pump the uh, sewage to the street. Uh, that's number one. Uh, there, by doing so, a great a gravity feed probably wouldn't work, obviously. We're going the opposite direction. Uh, the second part is ledge. We are anticipating hitting ledge in that area. We have ledge protruding out of the ground now, so we know there's ledge there. Um, companies have looked at it and determined that they try to figure out a way to go uh, on a, the clearest way to the to the street to make the uh, make the connection. One of the big elephants in the room is um, two projects have been done already on West Main in that area, on the corner of uh, West Main and Mansfield Ave. Uh, th those two connections were done, and on top of the hill, uh, the property that has windows, the car uh, repair shop out back, the home next door are all connected to uh, to town sewage. In every case, um, the once the contractor reached the end of the pipe where the um, sewer line was uh, was moved to by the contractor, they found a wall. What they found was a capped line up against granite. So we already know we're going to have problems in that area. We know we're going to have to drill some in order to, if, if, in the very least, to get to the end of the end of the pipe. And we don't know how much that's going to involve. So knowing that, we decided to suggest to town meeting, select board and finance committee that we go with a grinder pump. And the grinder pump will grind the material up at the lower level and push it up to the street. The difference is the uh, sewer pipe, the uh, gravity feed sewer pipe, is actually six inches in diameter, where the grinder pipe is an inch and a half. So that's designed to kind of go around wedge <laughs> as you find wedge. So they don't have to maybe take out as much wedge as they have to. Whatever wedge they, they run into is an additional cost. And we've determined that uh, it's gonna cost $250 an hour 
you know, it could take an hour to go through a piece of uh, granite. It could take two days. We don't know. So we're, we're kind of anticipating that we are going to hit uh, some issues there. But the ranges have been, again, uh, 21,900 up to uh, 36,200 of the quotes that we've received. And even at that 36.2, they're still looking for $250 an hour to, uh, to drill. Our recommendation is to go with company out of uh, Bridgewater, LL Silver. He has done one of the projects on West Main. He's very much familiar with what he's going to be dealing with. And he actually came in at one of the lower prices on the uh, on the pumping station, the pumping uh, process at $21,000. $900. So he was one of the cheaper ones. So our recommendation is going to be that. Now, in addition to that $21,900, we are going to ask for some additional money. Uh, we're going to ask for a total of $27,000 to protect ourselves from the possibility of hitting wedge. And obviously, if we don't use the money for the process, whatever's left over, we'll go back, we'll go back to the town. So uh, just to be uh, safe, we, we do know we're going to hit wedge. There's no, there's no question in our mind. Uh, we've got at least two sections of it in the front that are protruding from the ground now. We have no idea what the size is or diameter is. Uh, they will do some exploratory digging in that area to find the easiest, safest route to get it out of there. But uh, that's what we've been told, and we'll see what happens. Sorry, Bob, did you say 27000 in addition to the 21900 No. In that quote, 27000 total? Yeah, 27000 total. It would be 21-2 plus whatever it is to make 27,000. If you do it, you do your math, it says $5,000, uh, 250 an hour, it doesn't last very long. So right. I hope that will be enough to finish the project. Madam Chair? Yes, Zach. Well, with all the challenges there, uh, I, I assume the only thing in there is a bathroom. Uh, why not just put in a septic system and call it a day? Well, we have a sewer line that goes in front of the property, and by bylaw, we are required to, re to uh, connect to it. And uh, our cesspool that we presently have, we're not sure, and none of us are old enough to remember, if there was a high school on that, on that property, the original high school was there. And we don't know if the, when they built the, uh, when they moved the schoolhouse, if they connected to the existing cesspool or if they built a new one. But we do have a cesspool. We do not have a septic system. Uh, but is our understanding we are required by town, town law that we have to re we are we are required to connect to the uh, sewer line like everyone else in that area. So that's a reason for it. In the long run, we're better off. I mean, we have to pay for uh, electricity to grind it. You know, obviously there's going to be some maintenance to it, but you know, that's something we'll absorb and we'll take care of as a as a nonprofit. Madam Chair. Yes, Mike. And if he, if you were even able to do a septic system, it would probably cost you this much or more. Because of the wedge. We're gonna hit we're gonna hit wedge no matter where we are. Yeah. We have wedge over the parking lot in the back, we have it up in the building on the left side, we have it on the right side. There's wedge everywhere. So it's a, it's a grave concern to us also. Obviously, if it goes above and beyond the 27,000, then the um, historical society will have to come up with the additional cash. We're prepared to do that. Um, Jack lands and ledge, that's the story of Norton, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Joe. Uh, Bob, maybe I missed it. Uh, the recommendation for the parking lot, were you going with the 16,000 number? Yeah, we, we were suggesting we go with Ryan Asphalt. And it's sixteen thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars. Okay. And that one we're not too concerned about because if we do hit some wedge there, we can pave over it or pave around it, I guess. You know, it's gonna be part of the parking lot. So uh, we think we uh, we have enough clearance there. We we shouldn't get too much if we do hit it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Mike, just to clarify, this funding would come from free cash. Correct, Paula. Anyone else have questions, comments for Mr. Yeah, well, is, it, is there a reason why the Historical Society can't use the 
the new community center at all? Well, I think I think we could. I mean, we obviously will, will it'll be available to us like it will be for anyone else. Just so everyone knows, the historical society uh, is at 18 West Main Street. We have a two-room schoolhouse there. Uh, if anyone hasn't been there in recent years, if you've had third graders, I know the lot of students come every every uh, spring to, to visit us. But if you haven't had a chance uh, during the rest of the uh, the pandemic, uh, the school was uh, was closed. Neglected and not, and no one was really paying attention to it. When we went back in the fall and spring, we found a lot of damage, mold. We had uh, we had leaking roofs. We had standing water. We had all kinds of issues. So we spent tens of thousands of dollars to restore the building uh, back to where it is. And now we think it's even in better shape than it was before, because we now have a museum and the schoolhouse and the free bay garage in the back. We call it the barn. Uh, is now a new uh, museum that we've recently uh, built that we're very proud of and we invite all of you to come down and take a look at it sometime. It really came out nice. Uh, we also have Mrs. Wheaton's carriage in there, which we recently acquired. And we have the old school barge, which was the original school bus here in Norton, two, two of our school bus. So we have all that there. The, the municipal uh, buildings are available to us, but we do all of our meetings at the schoolhouse. Uh, we try to uh, once every couple of months, we have a historical event there. We explain, like last Sunday, we did the Five Rivers of Norton, explaining to people what they're all about, um, you know, where they originate, where they end, and some of the history of the rivers as they uh, as they were used by the people here in Norton. So we do a lot of that too. But um, you know, we're very proud of our building, and we're uh, obviously uh, looking for people to get involved and come back and see what we've done and uh, and get involved with it. But yeah, we can use any municipal building we want, but we uh, we prefer to use our own. We are a 501c3. We are a nonprofit. We do maintain the building. We take care of all the, all the, the um, ex expenses related to the building. The town has never given us any uh, funding that I'm aware of. And I was on the finance committee in 1987 is when I started. And in all my years in, in town government, I've never, ever do I remember the Historical Society come to the town for anything. We moved the building there at our own expense. We did everything on our own. So uh, this, these two requests are based on the fact that we don't own the land, the town owns the land. So where it is town owned land, we feel that they can they can help us make these, uh, make these improvements. Paula? Yes, Mike. Um, just on a Steve's question, um, I don't think there's enough room at the senior center to store all the stuff that historical things that are items that are in the uh, historical society building. And we haven't done any um, planning yet on what's going to happen to that property after the senior center moves out. If we do retain that property, we'll have to tie that property in the sewer too. So you'll be talking the same expense. Madam Chair? Yes, Cody. Um, Mike, just a, a question on, um, uh, to Bob's point, if, if, you know, the town has never provided any funds towards the historic society. Um, why does this have to be done now? And when we're in a budget shortfall issue that continues to compound year over year, why would we spend this money now? Why are we pulling it out of free cash to do it? Why wasn't it part of the budgetary request in the spring? And I'm just concerned that we're, we're pulling from free cash to do something now when we were shortfall on a lot of things. This seems to be like a like to have, not a need to have, and we're we're falling short on need to have right now. Madam Chair, um, we, yep. <clears throat> um, I sent pictures of the uh, the drive lot, the driving area in the back of parking lot, along with my proposal. If anyone of you would like to come down and take a look at it, keep in mind that we have a, an elderly population that uses this building quite often. The total back uh, parking lot is totally destroyed uh, after the after we have to have it plowed this winter. We're assuming that it's going to be even worse than it is now. 
Uh, if you look at the pictures, you can tell that it's in very, very bad shape. Uh, the uh, lead bar is exposed, and there are, there are major holes in the, in, the, in the pavement. And even myself, I was walking through there the other day, and I tripped over a chunk of, chunk of concrete that was laying on the ground. So it's very dangerous. And that's one of the reasons why we wanted to uh, to request this, this money. We understand that the budget is tight. And uh, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't feel it was something that was very important. Regarding the sewer line, uh, we have events. We have an event Sunday. Uh, after about an hour or so, the water doesn't run anymore. It just kind of sits there. So we're, the sewer, uh, the actual uh, sewer is not working anymore. The cesspool doesn't work. And if we're in there during the week, a couple of days a week, it's not a big deal. But when we have a, a, a large event, uh, it, it turns into a problem. On Wednesday of this week, we have all the seniors. We've invited the entire council on aging and all the seniors of Norton to come on down. We're going to give them a tour of the building, you know, have some, some snacks there and, and show them around. And I can assure you, if you come down there on Wednesday, that system will not be working. So even though we, we know there's uh, times are tough, and we totally understand it because we're going for the same issues ourselves, just trying to pay our utility bills. Um, we recognize the fact that it's uh, it's tough time, but we, these are, these are two very important projects that need to get done. But uh, so, Bob, just to Cody's point, why wasn't this requested in the budget season that last spring? We were so busy trying to repair everything there and everything that was going on. Um, we never thought gave it a thought about asking the town for anything. To be honest with you. When we started talking about how can we come up with the money to make these necessary repairs, uh, we started reaching out to some of our members to see if there's a way to do it. And when the library uh, paving uh, project was, was funded, it occurred to us that we could also ask for money. So we didn't actually come up with these ideas until this summer, to be honest with you. And the main factor was, um, when we had the buildings painted and we had the Bristol County Sheriff's Department there for a few weeks helping us, uh, we recognized right away that it was a problem with the septic system. And uh, we've been kind of band-aiding it ever since, but uh, these are very important projects. And to be honest with you, we weren't thinking about it in the springtime. Uh, we had other things we were trying to get accomplished and we finally got them done. And then we said, well, okay, what are, we, what are the next priorities? And these are our next two priorities too to make that build, building functional. Mike, the Norton Historical Society, does that have its own line item in the budget? I just don't recall discussions during budget. No, the, the Norton Historical Society itself is a uh, nonprofit. We are 501c3. We pay for all of our own expenses. We insure it. You know, we, we, all the utilities are paid by us. It's raised, money is raised through grants, donations, fees, um, membership, any, any way we can come up with the money. So we, uh, unfortunately, like, like everywhere else, our reserves have been dwindling drastically in the last couple of years, especially after the uh, thousands of dollars we spent to restore and repair the building. Uh, recently, the new shed in the back uh, has a beautiful museum inside it and after we got it done we got those one of those rainy weekends this summer and realized that the uh the roof was leaking down the back wall after all the work we did on it so now we're we actually uh, found a company and we came up with five thousand dollars out of our own pockets to pay for it to get it done to seal up the building so and we have other issues like that too we're still working on internally and mike this wouldn't be something that we could maybe tap into like, I don't know, the Hicks fund or some trust fund. Would that be appropriate? No, um, the Hicks fund is for cemeteries, maintenance of the cemeteries. Okay. Um, so we would have to use the free cash. And as Bob said, we, the town owns the property. So if someone is injured on that property, we're liable for it. And, you know, um, as far as uh, what's done on the property with the historical society, um, I think it's very important um, that we maintain something like this 
uh, for the history of the town. Madam Chair. Yes, Joe. Mike, I, this may sound like a stupid question, but the the town owns the property, including the building, correct? No. No. The, you the, the, the uh, historical society owns the building. We insure it. We take care of it. Okay. We don't own um, it. Okay. Um, and second question, which is slightly different, is what's what's the time frame that's given for a property once the sewer line has gone through to connect to it? I, I sort of assumed that had to happen right away. Um, it was five years, but was it changed to seven? I seven, think no, seven, seven. Yeah. I thought that was just for the payment, though. I thought <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> No, that's, if, the if, that's the answer, so it doesn't matter what I thought. Madam Chair, if you own a piece of property on West Main Street between the Housing Authority and uh, the intersection, intersection of uh, the center of town, uh, you are required within the next seven years to make the connection. Now, it's less than seven years, actually, uh, to make the connection. If you sell your property along, that pro along West Main Street, you have to make the connection before you sell the property, so it is mandatory to do it. We're not going to sell it, but we we will be required to make the connection. Yeah, I was just confused. I I knew about the seven years, and I knew it was mandatory that you had to connect up. I just was mis was you know confused on what the seven years actually meant. Adam Chip. Yes, Zach. Joe, there was a citizens petition. Uh, I, well, I remember. Two, I, I was there two, two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, it got extended out. I don't remember what the dates were, but I think it extended out via citizens petition. Yeah, I just had it in my head that that was for like the financing to to get it to you know to actually pay for it. I thought that the work had to happen quicker than so it's just that's just me. Madam, Madam Chair. Yes. The finances you're talking about, Joe, are the connection fees. Right. And right. They're rather steep. They really are. Steep oh yeah. In the one, if you remember at the town meeting last town meeting, we set up and asked for. The town would be waived on any any town owned property. Mm -hmm. That's why we were working on on the process. Because we didn't want to have to come and have the town come up with another thirty five thousand dollars in connection fees. So now we those are waived. So all we have to pay for is the improvements we want to make on the property. The connection. Okay. Yeah, the That's pipe it. in between. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes, Paul. So for what it's worth, uh, Bob, I had the pleasure of going to the Elvis uh, presentation this past summer, and it really was horrendous parking down in that lower lot and trying to walk up to the building uh, through all that concrete and stuff. It was terrible. I think it needs to get done. Madam Chair? Yes, Bill. Uh, Bob, do you uh, pay rent to the town? We have a 100 year lease at one dollar. Thank you. Starting in 1960, so in 2060, you remind us, okay? We owe we owe some more money at that point. We'll expect you to sign that check, Bob. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll give you the dollar. <laughs> Cash. Yeah. Anyone else have questions, comments about Article 15 or 16? Are we moving these tonight or are we holding off? Up to the group. Does everyone feel they have all the information they need to vote on this tonight? Madam Chair. Yes, Cody. Um, Mike, do we have a, a like running total of all the requests for all the warrant articles submitted that were that are going to be requested from free cash? Um, I don't have that with me, no. Um, but I will say, you know, as we talk about this, we always talk about that uh, free, what was the saying? Free cash isn't free. And, it, and so that you shouldn't count on using free cash for reoccurring expenses. Well, these, these are capital expenses, and this is exactly what you should be using your free cash for. Um, but I mean, we'll obviously get you a running total, but as I said, our free cash was what? Um, well over 4 million. 
So um, 24,000, whatever out of 4 million. Bob, have you presented this to the select board yet? And if so, what did they say? Yeah, we uh, actually, I approached them on behalf of the historical society and asked them to put the article on the warrant, which they did, and they, they voted unanimously to do that. I don't think they've taken a vote on the actual articles, but they did, they did put the article on for us. Do you know when you're presenting to them? I already have. Okay, so they just haven't voted yet. Right. Madam Chair? Yes, Joe. Um, I know you talked about this being capital. Does does it have to go back? Do you have to still present it to the, the Capital Improvement Committee? Um, we we will present it to get their endorsement at the next uh, capital meeting. When is that, Mike? October 3rd, Zach, am I correct? Next week, we skipped a week, yeah, whatever that is. What's October 3rd? Yeah, maybe, maybe then we should wait until after you've talked to the capital improvement folks. So, Zach, you'll be meeting right before our meeting then? I think it's after. Was it Wednesday night, Bob? Uh, Bob, oh. I mean, uh, like Tuesday night. Oh, okay. Madam Chair? Yes, Bill. We can always go back to reconsider. So why wouldn't we just vote now? We could. Madam Chair? Yes, Cody. Is any consideration going to be given for, from capital improvement? I'd, I'd rather capital improvement have their discussions on it and make their recommendations or suggestions. Because um, if they come back and say yay or nay or it should be more, it should be less. I'd rather I'd rather look at it once instead of reconsider personally. Okay. Anybody else feel the same or different? I, I tend to agree with that. I think that's kind of why I was saying that before. It just it seems like they should go first, I guess. <laughs> okay. I don't believe we ever vote on other stuff um, from capital before it goes before capital. You know, if this does have to go to capital, I agree, Joe. All right. All right, I'm not hearing different, so I think we will table these as well, Mike for a future meeting after October 3rd. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Next is um, Article 24, a petitioned article. Okay. Do we have the petitioner with us this evening? Not seeing the petitioner. No. no. Then maybe we'll hold off and try and get them at the next meeting. Oh, I know, I know what the issue was. Well, if we could just put this aside for now and do the other two articles. Um, Dan is at a conservation meeting tonight. He wasn't sure what time he'd get out. Okay. So if uh, he can get on by the end of your meeting, we could you could take it up again. Otherwise, we'll wait to a future meeting. Okay. We'll wait and see if he joins us this evening. All right, so let's go back then to uh, Article 10. So Article 10, um, what we'll be looking for is um, for the board, uh, the committee to appropriate um, from free cash $201,801 um, to be used um, for the purposes that uh, under the opio opioid settlement agreement um, and some of those purposes uh, I believe you have in your packet uh, to support opioid education, prevention, treatment, recovery, and harm prevention. Uh, I think we may have talked about this before. We're, the $201,801 is what we received this year from the opioid settlement and it has to be used for these purposes. Um, as a matter of fact, we got an email today from the state looking for the first report 
um, on what we've spent the money on. And we haven't spent any money yet because there was no provision in state law for us to be able to do that until it was appropriate at a town meeting. So, um, you know, working with um, NOPE, um, which is in a very active committee in town dealing with uh, the opioid situation, we'd work with them to determine uh, expenses that are justified under uh, the guidelines set forth in the uh, settlement. And so, uh, as I said, I'd be looking for an appropriation of $201,801 free cash. Anyone have any questions regarding Article 10? Madam Chair. Sure. Yes, Cody. So, Mike, that's that within free cash, that was earmarked money from that settlement. Essentially, so we it sits in free cash, but it's not really free cash. Exactly. Yep. So and it has to be used on stuff like this. So one way or another. What and what was the total? Uh, two hundred and one thousand eight hundred and one dollars. So you're you're basically pulling it out of free cash and setting it aside in a separate account that you can spend without approval. Right. Okay. And it will sit in that article. Um, I don't know how many years it will take to uh, to spend that, but I'm sure it will take quite a while. That and was going to be my the, question. Do we have to spend it? <laughs> We, have a we don't have we don't have to spend it within a time frame no um and in the end we could receive up to nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars from the settlement wow in addition to this 201 uh, to total so another seven hundred and sixty thousand spaced out over a number of years Any other questions, comments about Article 10? Madam Chair. Yes, Cody. So the um, when you pull this out and put it into that um, article, that fund, whatever uh, we call it, um, it has to be related to opioids or narcotics or drug prevention or I mean, is there any possible use that you could make the argument that I know we were talking about AEDs and replacing the one at, um, at Everett Leonard, but um, considering that, you know, cardiac arrest could be part of a um, reaction to opioid overdose. I mean, is there at least an argument that you could use that fund, those funds towards that? I'm not clear on that. Um, I would have to check. I know we can use it to buy Narcan. Um, we can use it for education programs at the school um, on opioids, um, any type of prevention treatment, or um, we can use it for um, services that uh, the police clinician may have to provide to people. Um, so I, I'll check into uh, the uh, heart monitors. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, Zach. I think uh, Cody suggested that uh, he saw somebody at the Historical Society doing opioids, so we may need to funnel some money uh, over uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the parking lot? In so the so parking lot, uh, rolling around really in the not uh, safe. concrete. Did somebody say those rocks aren't concrete? <laughs> Mike, what if we put a uh, a needle collection bin on top of the new parking lot? Like we'd have to pave it. <laughs> Come on In order now. to get to the bin safely. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm hearing you. The logic is making sense here. As long as it clears the red tape, right? Okay. Any other questions or discussion for Article 10? All right. Um, oh, who is that? That was me, but it's not a question. I'm just going to make the motion. All right. Uh, I make the motion that we recommend that the town raise an appropriate $201,801 from free cash uh, to uh, fund 
to the purposes outlined in the Massachusetts State Subdivision Agreement for Statewide Opioid Settlements. Second. Okay, I hear a motion and a second to recommend Article 10 as written. I will take a roll call vote. Kevin. Yes. Steve. Yes. Paul. Yes. Sandy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Bill. Yes. Bonnie. Yes. Cody. Yes. Zach. Yes. Trace. Yes. I too am a yes. That is unanimous. 11 yes. And the next article um, is article 11 and kind of in the same vein, um, we've received 85,000 in impact fee um, revenue from um, marijuana. And this money can only be used for impacts related to the facility. Um, so I would be looking for uh, the same thing to appropriate 85,000 from free cash um, to be uh, expended only for any lawful purposes that uh, the host community agreement will allow us to expend these funds. And as I said before, um, depending on the legislation that the state passes, there are is a good possibility that these funds may have to be given back. So we want to hold these funds in an account. So if we do have to give them back, we have the money available. When would we find that out, Mike? Um, they're working on legislation now. And uh, the question is, are they going to make it retroactive? Yeah, so we don't know that yet. So if they make it retroactive, it would affect the HCA that we've already signed. Madam Chair? Yes, Paul. Mike, um, we put this money into account. Who actually gets to approve yanking it out and spending it? I mean, is it just... It, it would be... The uh, like board needs to vote on it, or, or who? who manages it? it? It would be myself working with the town accountant, and... Uh, they would have to be expenses that the facility also agrees um, is attributable to their facility. To be honest with you, it's hard to figure out that we're gonna have impacts, but I know in the original days of the facilities, everyone was concerned about parking overflow. And, um, you know, if you had, if you had a facility that was in a mall, maybe there could be odor issues that you'd have to hire a consultant to go and uh, work on. But with a freestanding building, um, with a large parking lot on a, on a main road, I don't see what impacts we're gonna have, but we'll see. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, Zach. Mike, why wouldn't this go, why couldn't you just put this entire thing assuming you get approval from the state into the police budget for additional patrols around the marijuana facility? If there are additional patrols required, we, we could do that. One could make an argument, oh, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Yes, bye. One could make an argument that on Xfinity concert nights, <laughs> maybe if need to. But this would have to be something that would be both agreed upon by the facility owner of the establishment and the town, correct? Mike? Right. The, right. The way that the state has set it up in the new legislation is um, if we had any uh, instances where we had to expend funds, we would then have to invoice the, the company and then they would have to pay us for it. That's the way they want it now. They don't want us holding on to the money. And Mike, is this the same um, 
Fun, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Yes, Paul. This is the same um, um, issue that's being debated with the elected green ladies. Um, it is one of the issues, yep. Yeah, and it just amazes me then, because like you said, there's almost no way to potentially utilize it. It's not like it's just money going to the town to be thrown into free cash for our use. Madam Chair? Yes, fine. So just so I understand, Mike, this yep. 85000 is not money that we would have. It's money that we could, up to that amount, spend if we were to find issues of impact the facility had on the area or the town um, and agree with, in an agreement with them. So right the eighty five thousand is money we already have that they have paid to us and now they're uh, just like with the opioid money there was no provision in mass general law to just set up an account so that when you got this money it went into a um, cannabis impact account so um, it's money we have and uh, if there are any impacts that we have to address then we could use this money to pay for those impacts. And uh, we would contact the company to uh, review with them what we were gonna be spending that money on. So when uh, we do spend it, and then they come back looking for money, uh, if they do at some point, they don't say, well, we should have, we don't agree that that was an impact, you know? So we would have to uh, address it with them. Madam Chair. Yes, Cody. Mike, are there, um, as part of the licensing or, you know, the existence, is there, um, is there any, uh, like requirement or any additional resources we have to put towards like building inspections, health code inspections, like any of that stuff that's not borne by them that we as the town, as the host community, have the rights to go in and like regularly do that would otherwise, you know, we've, we've got to pay the people to, to do that or re produce the reports or respond to complaints or whatever the, the case may be. No, nothing other than uh, that they pay for any permits they pull, they pay for. Um, nothing different than any other um, facility in town. This is, it's specifically to like, if there were traffic issues or you, you can't use it for wear and tear on the road, that's a state road that Canon's on anyways, right? Because you're right. not, right? So there's no like impact there. Um, I guess you could argue that people using reservoir to get there, I mean, could you use it for a portion of road maintenance on reservoir for the traffic of getting there? Um, yeah, it would be a hard argument because they, they'd when say, I go there, that's the one, that's the road. I mean, argument. I guess the argument would be, well, do you charge the people that go to Cumberland Farms for using Reservoir Street? There's more cars going in and out of Cumberland Farms than there are going in and out of. Yeah, but there's no, there's no HCA set up for it. I mean, they, yeah. they set up next to Cumbies on their own and that, I'm just, I'm trying to make the argument to say if, if we are able to to keep it and it's not retroactive and it goes into that account um looking into a way to, to utilize that money we can use it if there's something that we need to hire an attorney to review or if as i said before say there was an odor issue and we had to hire experts to determine if there really is an odor issue and what we think should be done to address it um we can use it for um for town council to review what's legal to use it for <laughs> right because we're gonna like if we if we have to look into how yeah. we can legally spend it we got to pay town council and the only reason we'd have to pay them is to to research the hca right. like the impact fund so i would imagine we should be able to pull from that at the very least and and to that point i know like town council like the legal fees it's a regular discussion point how much of town council use last year and the year before was around 
HCA discussion. I know there's been a lot of additional discussion about HCAs um, recently. And if we're utilizing town council at 300 or 400 an hour, whatever they're charging, can we pull that from that? That is a legitimate expense in the HCAs. Okay, so can you retroactively use that? Can you can you reimburse previously spent funds from the HCA or from the, the impact fees that were paid? Um, I, I'll have to use some of this money to hire town council to make that determination if we can use this money to pay them. Because <laughs> if we could, then we can recertify yeah. old free cash that we had put towards it, right? We could yeah. we could dial that back and put it back into free cash, hopefully. Oh, Jim? Yes, Paul. Mike, they also pay a 3% of the gross sales um, a fee. Does that go right into free cash with no restrictions? Yeah, that goes right into the general fund uh, and is certified as free cash. That was uh, about 54000 last year, and that would have been from September 17th to June 30th. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or discussions for Article 11? Comet is right next to Cumberland from the across from Alberto's on Route 140 and North on Ave. That's right, Peter. Thank you. Okay. The chair would recommend, uh, sorry, the chair would entertain a motion to recommend Article 11. Madam Chair? Yes, Joe. Uh, I make a motion that we recommend Article 11 to move $85,000 from free cash into an account to be expended for any lawful purpose as outlined in the host community agreement. Okay, hearing a motion and a second to recommend Article 11. I will take a roll call vote. Kevin. Yes. Paul. Yes. Steve. Yes. Sandy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Bill. Yes. Bonnie. Yes. Cody. Yes. Zach. Yes. Trace. Yes. I too am a yes. Unanimous article 10, 11 yeses. I mean 11, sorry. That's all I have um, for tonight. Okay. We do have a set of minutes to go over. From... Thank, you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mark. From April 25th, 2022. I have several edits on page one, about halfway down, Ms. Sawyer asked if the position says is funded, it should be will be funded. The next line after that, Mr. Units confirmed it is, it should say will be. And then the next line right after that, correcting the misspelling of Zach's last name yet again. That's on every page. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I see a lot of pages. Um, page two, the third, basically paragraph, Mr. Evans asked how many pumper bench vehicles there are in the fire department, just adding the. Towards the bottom of that page two, correcting Zach's last name two more times there on page two. Page four. Correcting Zach's last name two more times there in the middle of the page. And then in the third to last paragraph on page four, Ms. Bresley replied, Devco North America has their own capital and also brings, just deleting also. Page five, middle of the page, um, Dr. D. Giuseppe shared the assessor's map does not indicate any wetlands, although it is right on the Rumford River, putting in is there. Misspelling of Zach's last name yet again. 
couple lines beneath that. Um, the last page of page, the last paragraph of page five, um, it says initiates in the town's matter meter plan. It should be master plan. Page six, towards the end of the page, about the third paragraph up, Dr. D. Giuseppe added the planning board also unanimously, unanimously voted in favor of these three articles and also just deleting also. Madam, Madam Chair? Yes, Joe. Uh, just to be clear, you keep saying Dr. D. Giuseppe, it's just Mr. Oh, geez, Mr. Sorry. I just don't want to, when they get corrected, I don't want <laughs> Yes, thank you for that. <laughs> it's past my bedtime. All right. Madam um, Chair? Yes, go ahead. Would it be easy just to have Zach officially change his name? <laughs> I think so at this point. Um, at the end, I'm just going to the spelling of his name on page six. Oh, I mean, page seven. Anybody else have any other edits? Madam Chair? Yes, Bonnie. I think it's page three where um, Paul, Mr. D. Giuseppe, gets introduced. I just think it probably makes sense to identify him as the Norton Planning Director. I don't think it states it anywhere. Um, just since he yes. isn't anymore and looking back at minutes, it makes sense to know who was speaking. Yes, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Hearing nothing, the chair would entertain a motion to recommend these minutes. So moved. Okay. Second. Did someone second? Second. Okay. All right, taking a roll call. Kevin. Kevin, did I hear you? All right, we'll go back to Kevin. Paul. Yes. Okay, Steve. Yes. Sandy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Bill. Yes. Bonnie. I wasn't there, so I'll just abstain if you have enough votes. Okay. Cody. Same. Zach. Yes. Trace. Abstain. And Kevin, did you? Are you there? Yes. Okay. And I too am a yes. Eight yes, three abstain. Okay. Um, so we have a meeting on Monday. I uh, sorry, we have a meeting Thursday. We get to see each other again in just a few days. Um, the Norton High School Library, seven o'clock with the school committee. And then Monday night via Zoom again at seven o'clock. Um, and then I did send an email today. We are going to do a joint meeting with the select board because they are not able to join us at our joint meeting this Thursday. Um, so we're going to do a joint meeting on Monday, November 13th. Um, we are not sure yet if we're going to maybe try a hybrid meeting. Um, I'll have to discuss with Mike some meeting space. And um, I know we haven't had a lot of success with hybrid, but we may try that. There's a select board member who is going to be out of town that day, but wants to join us remotely. So any other discussion? Madam Chair, that, Madam Chair, that's after the town meeting. What's the um, reasoning for it? It's just to... To start uh, to get ahead of the budget season. For next year? Yes. Okay. For next year in preparation. I know things will get really busy with the holiday break, Christmas and January, and then next thing you know, we're meeting um to discuss the budget so we want to try to meet together as a group prior to that madam chair yes bill i was on a um conservation meeting this evening um before i got onto this one and theirs are all remote also and at the beginning of their meeting and I guess they do it at every meeting, they read some statement that basically, you know, uh, Governor Laura Healy has extended blah, 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 
until March of like 2025, the ability to do remote meetings. Do we need to be reading that? I was never told that we needed to, but I noticed that once at one of their meetings as well. I guess we could just, ask Mike that. Yeah. It's just curious. I'm like, hmm, we don't do this. Yeah. Can we just go with the preamble to the Constitution? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on your first meeting, Madam Chair. <laughs> okay. There is not any more discussion. I will entertain a motion to adjourn this evening at 8.51. I'm chair. Yes, Joe. I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. Second. All right, Bill second. Okay, roll call to adjourn. adjourn. Kevin. Yes. Steve. Yes. Sandy. Yes. Joe. Yes. Bill. Yes. Bonnie. Yes. yes. Cody. Yes. Paul. Yes. Zach. Yes. Trace. Yes. I too am a yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, Saul. On Thursday. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.